Hi, welcome to another very interesting time where we learn neuro linguistic programming. My name is George Asen. Permit me to be your neuro linguistic teacher today. And if in following class, we've been talking a whole lot about how to use neuro linguistic programming to hit peak performance, to be a peak performer. And not just to be a big performer for yourself, but to help other people. To help other people. So if you're interested in life coaching, this is where you pay attention to a whole lot. And then, so we're going to go into the final details of neuro linguistic programming. And one of, one, one of the things I want you to understand basically is that how did I learn NLP and how can you learn NLP, all right, at least have an understanding of it and then begin to apply it. The best way to learn NLP is to understand the terms and the terminolo terminologies. You know, so pick up, listen to all of the terms I'll use and write them down. Write them down and then incorporate them in your conversation and then as I start learning. And you can also Google up and check out books, materials, so that when you see those words again, they will not be unfamiliar to you, at least you know them and you can recognize them. So today we'll be talking about sub-modalities. Don't let the words scare you, just take down them as notes. That's how to learn. And then we'll get to understand it more and more. So we're talking about sub-modalities. For us to talk about sub-modalities, we first must understand what modalities are. So let me start from the basics. We, we have five senses, all right? We have the, the sense the sense of hearing, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, and the sense of touch. Now, these five senses how we relate with the world, how we, we get and gather sensory data or information from the world. From this information, all right, we pass them through certain filters, all right? When we teach NLP model of communication, we teach that those filters are generalizations, those filters are distortions, and those filters are deletions. So the, the information, we, the several information that we receive, we generalize, and then we distort, and of course we delete. I've taught you that several, right? So it's very important because when we now get our own information, we now develop a perception from it, we develop a perception, and the perception that we have determines our behavior and I'll be able to determine the outcomes we, we have. That's basically the NLP structure. I'll teach that again exclusively so you can understand it. So, but how do, we, how do we connect with our world? We connect with the world through our five senses, through hearing, sight, smell, and touch. More technically, and I want you to understand this, that we, more technically, relate with the world in NLP terms, visually, or our five basic senses in NLP is visual, Auditory, when we say auditory, we're talking about the hearing, auditory, kinesthetic, we're talking about feeling, okay, touch, feeling, olfactory, that is smell, and gustatory, that's taste. So that's how we connect, and that's how we build the experience, that's how we form our experiences through these five modalities. Why you call them senses in NLP, we call them modalities or modes. Mode, so we get this information, sensory data, and that's how we interpret the world. That's how we form our experiences. But basically, we humans operate majorly on three. We majorly uh, interpret the world through our sight, through visual, through our kinesthetic, through feelings, how we feel, both externally and internally. So we have vision, we have the eye, that is visual inside our imagination. We have VE, visual external we have K we call it so kinesthetic is when we say kinesthetic we're talking about feeling that's K feel on our inside some of you can feel on our inside all right and K E how we feel on the outside then we also have A that is how what we hear what we hear we can hear stuff and you're hearing me now and we can also hear hear stuff on our inside that's how we represent those are our modalities now now, so we majorly focus on three. Now, it's very important. It's very important that I also say that when we even communicate, we have ex um, preferences. So you see, some people are very visual in orientation. So we hear words and we're very visual. We want to see things. We want to see things described to us. All right. So V, uh, we, we we call this people the visual people. We also have the kinesthetic people. That's the K, and we have the auditory people. That's the A. V A K. VAC. We call it the VAC representational system, and also 
the VAC mode of communication, a mode of communication. So you see a person who is visual say, I see what you mean. So if I'm listening to you speak and I hear you say, I see what you mean, I can quickly say to myself, that person is more visual. It doesn't mean that you don't have all of those senses operational, it just means that you're more visual. We also have people that will say, the K people or the kinesthetic people or the feeling people will say, I feel, it feels like, to me like, it feels to me like those that's the language pattern you usually will see them say. The auditory people will say, I hear what you're saying. So it's very important we understand is that VAK, VAC, is our representational system and we most likely do that. Now, so those are our modalities. Those are our modalities. Does it make sense to you? Those are modalities. Now, if you've been following me, I've also taught you very clearly and distinctly that if you see, you can look at a person while you're having communication and conversation, you're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with somebody, you're having a conversation with the salesperson, you can look at a person, and just by looking at that person, you know what kind of person it is at the spot of the moment. I can look at you, and by the movement of your eyes, I can elicit your strategy. I can know what primary representational system is yours. What do I mean by primary representational system? Primary being that what you, what your preference is, what you usually would represent, how you usually represent things first, first and fast, first and fast. So if you are a visual, usually your eyes will go up, up. If you are an auditory, your eyes will go sideways, and if you are feeling, your eyes will go down. So V up. A sideways and K usually down. So let's go to more specifics. So if I want to look at you and know your strategy, your emotional agenda, and know what can, how you're thinking, and I can, you can do that as an exercise for yourself. If your eyes goes up to the to the left, on one side to the left, what that means, I'm looking at you and your eyes goes up to the left. That's VR. VR means visual recalled or visual remembered. That is, you're trying to remember a picture. You're going back to memory lane, going back to the past to remember a picture. VC, that is visual constructed. You're trying to imagine, to envisage, and people who want to try to picture a picture, uh, picture and go that way, up to the, you know, up that way, up to the right. Now, sideways, either way, this side, left, VR, is auditory remembered. Auditory remembers means they're hearing stuff and they're trying to remember a sound. They're trying to remember how the sound of their late mom or their late relative, how he sounded or how she sounded. And then VC, a try, visual a auditory constructed, is you're trying to remember the sound. The sound, or not remember now, you're trying to construct a sound that you're not maybe a car you're going to buy a Mercedes-Benz car, trying to imagine that sound now, try and construct that sound now, Mercedes-Benz car that you want to get, this or a Ferrari, or you know, what kind of car that is, so you're constructing the sound, or constructing the sound of Mickey Mouse. And downwards, this side to the right, your right, is called K, K means kinesthetic, and whenever people are trying to feel, process their feelings, they look down to the left, and when people are trying to um, mono, um, have ex talk to themselves, sort of quiet, they go to write, write for you, and it's called AD. AD means auditory dialogue or auditory digital. Auditory dialogue means the way you converse. So if I'm looking at you and you look up, I know you're visual. You're either trying to remember or you're trying to construct. If you're looking sideways and I'm communicating to you, I know that your, pr your primary representational system is auditory. You're trying to recall or you're trying to, you're trying to recall or you're trying to construct. If you're looking downwards, you look at the side, I know you're feeling or you're trying to talk to yourself. This is important. And this is usually the eye movement of a normal right-handed person. So a left-handed person may be the other way. The only way you can get to know what kind of person is, is by what we call sensory acuity. Sharpness, ability to look at the person and quickly know, you know, know that this person is a left-handed person or not. So you can know that by saying, oh, this person is a left-handed person, so it's not doing it the same way that we're doing it. But that's not what we're going to. I've taught you that before. If you've been following our lectures, we've taught that before. Now, so in NLP, these are referred to the VA and K are referred to the representational systems 
or modalities. When you hear the word representational system or modalities, we're talking about VAK, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, and even olfactory and gustatory. For each of these modalities, now, now listen to this, this is where we're going deeper. For each of these modalities, that the V, the A, and the K, for each of these modalities, those three that we majorly use, there are they are finer distinctions. I'll explain that to you. Some modalities in NLP are fine distinctions. So, for example, your visual. If I tell you to close your eyes and imagine a picture, and I tell you to make the picture clearer, I tell you to make the picture bright, I tell you to make the pictures near and not far, I tell you to make to frame the picture, I tell you that let the picture be moving and not still. All right. I tell you to see yourself in the picture, to see yourself in the picture, that's an eye seeing you. When I began to begin to do that kind of thing, um, the final distinctions of visual is called submodality. So that's submodality for visual. For kinesthetics, I'm going to explain that to you. Basically, it's about hot or cold, what direction of the heat, okay? For, for, for sound or auditory, it can be how loud. How loud? How near? What direction of the sound? Those are when we start going to finer distinctions of finer distinctions of NLP. We are talking about submodalities. So, so let's get it now. Submodalities are the subsets, subsets of modalities. The subsets of modalities. Submodalities are the subsets of visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory, and let me include AD. AD being auditory digital. Are you following me now? If you have an issue with understanding and flow with me, all you simply have to do is to listen to these things severally. And in listening, take down the notes of the major terms that seem to be complicated, write them down. And by the time you take down the notes of those things that are complicated, you can decode them and understand them better. Is that clear? Now, these five or six, or as you were, they make up our representational system. And you know, why are we studying this? The V, A, O, G, and now A, D, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory, and A, D, or for most of us primarily, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, VAC, they form the meaning and the experiences that we have. They form the experiences. So the, the hatred, the love, the fear, the doubt, the belief, everything that you ever become is as a result of the VAK. Everything that you ever become. So you've, you've got to be very careful to notice this. Submodalities are the building blocks of the representational system by which we code, order, and give meaning to the experience we have. So the building blocks. So all that fine distinctions I said, when I start getting to this distinctions into specifics with you, meta specifics with you, meta frames with you, I am doing some modality. I'm using your trying to get down to your submodality. I can use this to work with a rape patient. If a rape patient comes to me and I want the person to create a new uh, or scramble, literally scramble that previous experience, I would have to use submodalities. I would have to use switch pattern. If, uh, if a person who is not um, a person who has um, state fright comes to me and needs to deal with state fright, what I'll do is I'll have to use, go down and deal with the submodalities to scramble, to manipulate it so that I can get a new experience for them. Because as we get to understand, the moment we can shift our our submodalities, we can shift our submodalities, we can shift the experiences that we have and shift the meaning that we have of those experiences. All right, no, this is so important. Okay. Okay. Now, so I'm trying to go back to my slides, but basically, I hope you're getting this. So, submodalities are so important, so, so very important that you need to get this going for you. Now, so let's go into more specifics. More specifics. All right, let's go into more specifics. Now, let's look at the sub modality of visuals. The sub modality of visuals. Let's assume that I'm working with somebody. And I want to change or shift his experience. All right. 
I want to shape or shape this experience. I could do things like sit down, close your eyes, and go back to that conversation you had with that person. I know you were very angry. I want you to remember the emotions, feel the feeling. I want you to see the pictures that you saw. I want you to hear what you heard, hear the conversations. I want you to make sure the environment you know, is clear, is bright. Um, let, let the pictures be very near you. Don't frame it, let it be very near you. See yourself standing. See, let this eye see you. See yourself standing before that person and having a conversation with the person. So very important. And then the next thing I want you to do is hear the conversation and on and on and on. As I go into that, I, I want you to feel what you felt. I want you to hear what you heard. Hear it loud and clear. And see yourself feeling very angry right now. So the person is going to states. Is going to that state. And I'm literally doing going to the final details and you use some modalities for um, self-hypnosis you also use some modalities to put people into trance and to people into self-hypnosis to help them so i've gotten them to that previous experience i can now begin to suggest new pictures new pictures that they can see and should see of another create another scene create another scenario and get them to see themselves doing better you know Paint a new picture, like paint a new picture and suggest to them and their imagination is working, they can now get um, a new feeling, a new experience. So you can use that to work on people that have mental issues, people have state fright, and if you do this on a regular basis with them, you'll see that how, how their lives will change. Um, there's something we talk, there's something we call about um, something we talk about switch pattern. Switch pattern. I probably want to teach. Let me just teach you the switch pattern now. Switch pattern basically is a sub modality technique. It's you getting your imagination to work in your favor, to bring an old experience you have and find out what triggers the experience. Put it at the back of your mind. You know, make it clear. Let's say you like to bite your nails. So you imagine yourself biting your nails right there. The experience. What makes you bite your nails? Think about the trigger that makes you bite your nails. And so you see yourself biting. The next thing that you want to do is you, you create another picture of yourself, confident, not biting your nails, very healthy, very smart, very confident. People who bite their nails are very childish and look very immature and irresponsible. So you see another picture of yourself in this life. Make that picture bigger, brighter, and bolder. And then this mental exercise we do in cause fish pattern is that you now get the picture, the small picture that is small, all right? And then, uh, okay, so the picture is here of the of you, of your experience, clear? And then this is the what, what you want to be. This is what you are, and this is what you want to be. Now you make this smaller, okay? Then let this one that is the negative habit that you're seeing be clear. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to mentally, this is a mental exercise, you're going to swap it, you're going to swap it, you're going to switch it. You're going to take this one out and then bring the picture of the person you want to be right in your face. You can even make a sound so it, it comes out loud, like swoosh or swoosh, whatever. So pick a picture of you, the negative habit, the biting of nails, you standing, and then a picture of you, the other picture of you um, being confident, not biting hands, looking very good, looking very smart, and then swoosh, take that one off and put the picture of you you know, smart, nice, great, not biting your nails right in front of you. Do it again and again and again and again and again. 21 times or more. And then make sure that whatever you're doing this is a trigger that you, you, you feel a trigger that makes you bite your nails, that causes you to switch because you want to anchor the two together. So you see that you feel the, the trigger in your mind, it's your elemental, your mind. You reduce the size of the picture and then you bring the, this picture of the person you want to be. That process is called switch pattern and that process is called, you're using more sub-modalities. And this, this may look like strange, but it's very powerful. You can use this technique to literally help a person who is suffering from state fright. So the person will see a picture of him, you know, doing very poorly, very embarrassed in front of a crowd, and then, the next thing that you're going to do 
is paint a picture of you speaking and getting people excited and then you switch it you, you switch it take this one lower and bring that one out let it come up bright in front of your face and you can see it clearly with the fine distinctions of you speaking getting a rousing ovation inspiring people looking very sharp looking very good looking very passionate do it again and again and again and again just by doing it again and again, you will elicit emotion. So what submodalities does is that it changes our experience, it also changes the meaning. I can get um, um, I can get a person who is afraid to no more be afraid, all right? Of maybe you're afraid of your boss. You're already afraid of your boss. And it's now every time you see a boss face, you become, you become afraid and so on. So what I'll tell you is sit down, let's help you get that fear off. So I'll tell you to imagine your boss right now and imagine the fear. Imagine you're your boss and you being afraid. Have you seen the picture clearly? I'll tell you, feel what you feel, hear what you hear, see what you see, see your boss clearly, as clearly as you can see him. And I want you to feel the feelings right there. Make it very clear on this thing. Can you see it? That's what you've done. You created the picture. Now I want you to create in your mind, put that aside. In your same mind, create another picture of you standing before your boss. This time, you're very confident. This time, there's no fear. This time, you know, you're talking, having a conversation with him, you're dressed very good, you're very sharp, you're on point, create another scenario. Can you do that? I get them to feel what you feel if you're going to be confident, you know, sense it, think it, do it, all right, in your mind. Then let's switch, switch, take that picture, replace it with the old one, do it again and again and again and again, and as you do it repeatedly, trust me, the new picture will be anchored and form a new pattern for you. So that when you now see the boss, really in the event, when you see him physically and really, you will not have that emotions of fear. So we use switch patterns as a form of submodality to help people um, cure fears, nail biting and a few sub things. If it's more complicated, there are some phobias that you may not, that switch patterns may not work. We need to use other neuro linguistic techniques like um, PAT, part integration yes part integration and so many other things and coring and so on to help them over a period of time to get them to be cured but for small for small stuff you may need to do that doesn't make any sense to you all right now there's one last thing i want to talk about before i i get into before i wrap it up today and that's about the very fact that you have sub modalities you have sub modalities and then you, you have um, some of that is as regarding dissociated state and associated state. I'm going to stop on that point. Dissociated state and associated state. Now, whenever you have an imagination and you see yourself, I must apologize because we had some technical issues with my laptop. I'm going to see if I can retrieve the information clearly again. But whenever you, whenever you have a picture of you, a very fine picture of you, and then you see yourself in that picture, that is called a dissociated state. That is, George and I sees a George in the picture. That is a dissociated state. Whenever you're you're doing, I'm supposed to give a speech somewhere, and then I see myself in that picture. That is being dissociated. I see, I'm observing myself. That is the dissociated state. But if for whatever reason I'm not seeing myself, I'm seeing the audience. That is associated state. Why is this important, and why should we use it? It's important because when you want to achieve goals and dreams. Sometimes you need to separate yourself and see yourself achieving that goal, speaking very confidently, doing your stuff. In your mind's eye, it all happens in the mind. You see yourself doing that stuff. You sit down, we call it mental rehearsals. You sit down and then you close your eyes and then you see yourself standing and giving that speech clearly, with confidence. And then you feel the energy that person has, you standing there. And then after I've done after a while, you can now merge, all right? That person you saw comes back and then merges with you. Once you now start seeing the audience and you rehearse the speech again, that is called associative state. Doing this will help you, help you greatly 
to achieve confidence because the moment you can um, manipulate your vision, the moment you can manipulate your vision, you can literally manipulate your life. Now, let me say this because I think a lot of you are wondering, George, does the same work? Does the same work? It works like magic. It works like magic. You must learn how to gain and control, gain control over your life, gain control over your mind. The battle is in your mind. The battle is in the mind. And you must learn to start using your imagination. Start using your, your abilities there. You must learn how to do this. Because that's how to grow and that's how to succeed. That's how to win with this stuff. I want to conclude by listing out the sub-modalities of the three, VAK. For visual, sub-modality is black or white or color. Near or fear, no near or far. Location, bright or dim. Size of picture. Associated or dissociated. You might have talked about associated and dissociated. Focused or defocused. Framed or unbounded. Movie or still. If a movie, fast, normal, slow. Three dimensional or flat. That's for visual submodality. Alright? Auditory submodality is usually loud or soft. Near or far. Internal or external. Location of the sound. What direction of sound is the sound from? Where, what part of the body is the sound? Stereo or mono? Fast or slow? High pitch or low pitch? Verbal or tonal? Reading, pulses, clarity. Those are the submodalities of auditory. What are the submodalities of kinesthetic? Strong or weak? Large area or small area? Weights, heavy or light? Location, textures, smooth or rough, constant or intermittent, temperature, hot or cold, shape, size, pressure, vibration. That is the submodality of kinesthetics. Now, so again, watch this video again and try to listen to the terms, document the terms, and see how we can apply it. As we continue to study some more about um, NLP, all of these things will start to make a whole lot of sense to you. And make it a whole lesson. So let me give you an assignment so it can be a lot more practical. Right now, I want you to sit down and then imagine yourself five years from today. I want you to imagine yourself where you'll be, what you do. I didn't say you should write them down, I said imagine it clearly. What weight you're going to have, how you're going to move. I want you to see yourself. Try and do that. Try and get your imagination. Make it bright, make it clear. If you have issues, because some people have issues trying to use their imagination, sometimes it is foggy and not clear, then maybe you are not visual in orientation, you're more auditory or feeling. So you can, if you're auditory or feeling, you do more of the feel how you're going to feel like five years from now, where you succeed, you know, let the feeling be near you. So make it um, be in the present tense. Um, feel here, you know, feel it, feel it, feel the power, feel the energy, feel the vibration, feel the pressure, feel the size. That's what feeling. For the tree, hear the sound of success, whatever sound you're going to be hearing, um, hear how you sound and all of that back then. That's how this works. Now, do this. Try using your mind to create these different scenarios. Do that for people that you love around you. And that's how to use your sub -modalities. Remember, sub is a subset of your modalities. Now, also remember that your sub modalities are the building block of the experiences and the means that you have. And then if they are the building blocks of the experiences and the means that you have, they determine your states. Your states can be broken down in your sub -modalities. I can manipulate your sub -modalities and create a new state for you. I hope you got value. I'll see you some other time. God bless.